Hello everyone, it's Miss Misa here, back to doing my men's rights series and very glad to be doing so. I was meant to get one of these videos out a while ago, but I didn't have the time to do the research that I needed to do in order to produce one of these. I've been trying to do research on certain books and theories for other videos in the future, plus trying to think of topics to do for my usual face cam ranty videos and I really can't keep up with everything that I want to do for the channel. But I'm here, I'm queer, kinda, and I'm ready to talk about men's rights. So today I want to explore the aspect of the men's rights movement that tends to get ignored by feminists and society as a whole in regards to finding reasons as to why it occurs. And that's the idea of men going to prison at an alarming rate and staying for an alarming rate in comparison to women. Now for the sake of this video I'm just going to be talking about the western world, specifically the US and the UK, because those are the areas of the world that are discussed by the MRAs and MGTOWs and feminists the most when they talk about this topic. So firstly, let's slam down the facts onto the table so that we're all on the same page here. Also, just super quickly, if any of you want to know where I get the information that I discuss in this video, then in the description below I will be linking all of the studies and the articles and everything that I refer to within this video. So one of the more alarming statistics in relation to this topic is that for every 1,352 men in prison, there are only 126 women within the US. Women represent only 5% of the prison population, which is a proportion that has fallen over the last decade, meaning that women are actually going to prison a lot less nowadays than before. In addition to this, a lower proportion of female than male defendants are arrested on average and held in custody in each. The proportion of females held in custody has remained broadly stable. It was 5% in each year since 2011 until it decreased to 4% in 2015. 13% of male defendants were held in custody in 2015, whilst this has fluctuated since 2011, it's also remained broadly stable. Now, what is the reason for this? Because that's a question that's been discussed for just about as long as this topic has been explored, but an answer's never actually been produced. Firstly, let's look into what the feminists say just because it's the easiest supposed reasoning to dissect whether you agree with it or not. So the feminist belief regarding this seems to be that men are just naturally inclined to commit crimes and therefore they get caught a lot more often and are put into prison more often than women are. Their explanation for this varies depending on what kind of feminist you speak to. More radical feminists tend to say that it's because of men's toxic masculinity, which is the standard of behaviour among men in contemporary American and European society that encourages domination of others, devaluation of women, and emotional stoicism. They claim that due to this, men tend to be more violent and angry naturally than women are, which results in them committing crimes more often than women do. Now personally, and this is just my opinion, I don't believe that this is the case. I've already explained in other videos why I don't agree with the concept of toxic masculinity, but men being more angry and violent may be an easy way to explain away them committing murder, assault, or rape, it doesn't necessarily explain away why men commit crimes like theft, insurance fraud, or even drug possession. The latter being a huge reason for why people are being imprisoned in the UK. I feel as though this is just an easy way for certain women to just blame men for the disproportionate amount of men being put away in comparison to women, mainly because it doesn't directly affect them and it isn't a woman's issue, which radical feminists tend to care about more than anything else. Now, more liberal feminists will have you believe that since the majority of men in prison are men of colour, that the issue is more about race than gender and that we should be focusing on why black and Hispanic men are in prison more often than white men. Now, I agree and disagree with this sentiment. While I agree that the disproportionate amount of men of colour in prison in comparison to white men is an issue that needs to be addressed, mainly by taking a lot more of a look at the communities of these race groups and trying to prevent the youth in those areas to not commit crimes and stay on the straight and narrow, which I know is easier said than done, but most good things in life are. I disagree that the issue of race is more significant than the issue of gender here. I do have to wonder if the roles were reversed and women were placed in prison more than men, whether they would find a way to blame women who were in the prisons, or whether they would place race on a higher rank of things to worry about than the gender gap. I believe that both of these ways of looking at the issue are an evident method for feminists to not have to concern themselves with it as an issue. Now obviously I'm not saying that all feminists lack concern for this issue that others who don't identify as feminists may have, 
But this seems to be the attitude of most feminists that I come across, which I guess is what led a lot of people in the anti-feminist community to assume that they don't really care about men's issues. It just seems as though they victim blame and then move on. Not that criminals are victims, but you know what I mean. Now on the other side, the men's rights activists have a different theory about why this is. Most of them seem to believe that women are treated better by the court system because of the gynocentricism of society. For those of you who don't know, gynocentricism is the idea of something being centred on or concerned exclusively with women, or taking a female or specifically a feminist point of view on something. Now this is a theory that I can kind of agree with in all honesty. The reason that I started making this series of videos on men's rights and I haven't really been focusing that much on videos exploring women's rights is that women have it pretty good in comparison to men in this part of the world and this is mainly because of the gynocentricism of society, specifically western society. We seem to live in a society where women are treated in a much more caring and considerate manner than men are. Whether it be the fact that in the UK men cannot convict their rapist if they're a woman, the fact that men who are falsely convicted of rape are punished and not given much, if any, retribution for their time lost on the outside, but women who falsely accuse them barely ever get punished for it, or the fact that women win custody over their children much more than men do even if they're good and capable fathers, society seems to be biased towards one gender and it is DEFINITELY not men. Now the fact that men get put away more often than women isn't even the aspect of this conversation that I want to focus on, despite a lot of this video being dedicated to it. The aspect of men going to prison that I want to focus on is the sentence differences between men and women, because this is the main reason that MRAs and anti-feminists get angry about this topic. According to a study by Sunja Starr, and I probably butchered this person's name, an assistant law professor at the University of Michigan, men on average receive 63% longer prison sentences than women who commit comparable crimes. In addition to this, Starr also found that women are twice as likely to avoid incarceration if convicted of a crime. Now this study is very interesting because it not only gives us the facts about this topic, but it also goes into why this may be the case, as in why women may not be going to prison that often in comparison to men and why men go to prison for longer on average. Now, this study implicitly points out that women just can't hack it in prison, whether because they need to raise families or are too emotionally frail, or literally lack the physical strength to survive behind bars, and claim that that could be a big reason as to why they don't get put away as often as men or for as long. This idea kind of supports the concept of gynocentricism within society being the reason for the gendered prison gap. Either society sees women as an important aspect of society that we need to keep on the outside to be productive members of said society, so it doesn't put them away, or society thinks that women need to be put on a pedestal and cannot handle prison even if what they do is terrible. I know that this is a very anecdotal example, but the case of Lavinia Woodward, the Oxford student who stabbed her boyfriend multiple times while high on cocaine and getting away with it because she's a bright student is quite evident of this. You all know that if she were a man and stabbed his girlfriend multiple times, this case would be perceived very differently. Now, feminists will inevitably bring up the case of Brock Turner and say, well, he was a man and he only received a small sentence for what he did. And in all honesty, I can accept that as an example of a man receiving a ridiculous sentence for something awful, and I was absolutely disgusted when I read about this case. Now, as much as I understand that as a counter-argument, this was a case of money and class at play, not a result of him being a man. You could even argue that his race did play a small part in the case as well, but it wasn't because he was a man. Woodward's sentence was a typical occurrence in regard to women being prosecuted in the court system. Men don't usually have such a tiny sentence for even the pettiest of crimes, but women on average do, which is why I don't consider what happened with Brock Turner to be an example of how our society works. This kind of stuff doesn't happen often. What happened with Woodward does, very often in fact. Now, the interesting thing that I find about this topic, and yes, this is probably going to turn into a rant about feminism, is that when questioned about this, most feminists that I've spoken to genuinely don't have an explanation. They don't know why this happens, they don't seem to really care too much about why it does, and they don't really offer any insight into what we can do about it. 
There's no moral outrage, there's no protest, there's no anger. Now obviously, hashtag not all, but I have yet to meet a feminist who even knows about this topic or show signs of really caring about it. In their opinion, they'd rather focus on the supposed wage gap, ranting about rape when they don't even realise how much worse men have it in that department in many ways, or supporting other feminists who fake stories of harassment like Anita Sarkeesian. And like I said, not all of them do, but I can't see any feminist doing anything differently in all honesty. But guys, that is all I really wanted to say on the matter. Like always guys, thank you for watching, and just before I go, I did want to do a quick little shout out since I haven't done one in a while, it seems. Today I want to shout out a commentary channel called The Random Shark. This guy, well, Shark, is a channel that doesn't really cover anti-SGW topics, but mainly trending ones. He also does his own opinion pieces on concepts such as self-deprecation and bandwagoning. He's very entertaining and he gives a good insight into topics and events. His channel's pretty good, so go check him out. He is criminally undersubbed. Also, just a quick reminder to subscribe to my second channel if you feel like it. I'm still uploading speed paints onto there, so yeah, if you wanna go check that out, I mean, uh, it would be nice, link in the description. <laughs> but as always guys, I will see you in the next video of whatever the fuck I decide to make next, and if you have any other topics in terms of men's rights that you want me to cover, then just let me know in the comments below, and I will see you next time. Bye!